I'm in uh, Washington, Utah, which is just down the down the road from me, about 45 minutes. And I'm at Strip Taxidermy with one of my favorite people. This is Jeff Baird. Howdy. Jeff Baird is uh, you're the only you're the only taxidermist there, right? No, there's actually three now. Oh, really? Yeah. Out of this shop? Oh no. Oh, oh you're the only one that doesn't work here, right? Yeah. So yeah. You're, this is your own. This is your baby. Yeah. So he's got a shop here behind his house in Washington, and uh, today we thought we'd run down, visit Jeff, just kind of. Do a walkthrough. Everybody loves a taxidermy shop, but we thought we'd do a walkthrough and there's some tutorials on, you know, maybe how to keep an animal. So some tips and tricks on how to keep an antelope or broad an antelope. So we're going to run through that. Um, before we get started in some of the other stuff, we thought we'd just do a quick tour. If you just kind of yep. show us around, just awesome. show us some cool stuff. So yeah, just starting out, you know, coming into the shop right here is a flushing wheel. I use this. Uh, usually you're only using this if you're tanning the hide yourself. But sometimes when you want to be particular, like me, you get a little bit of thick leather on a hide. I'll shave it down, especially around the ears and face, just to get the detail. Do you tan? Back you don't do your own tan I, stuff, right? Same I do off. not. But every once in a while, you get some back that are just too thick. Okay. If you put them on, they'll look fine, but you won't have that quality to them. They won't, they won't stick to the form as well. That leather will swell okay. and, and dry out and drum a little bit. I just pulled this out yesterday and and then I'll come back through and turn the ears. This is the cartilage. Some taxidermists leave the cartilage in. So that was one of the questions I had. End. So I got stranded in Alaska this last year for mm -hmm. an extra seven days. Yep. So all I really had to do was like sit around and monkey with the cape, right? Yep. So I, I uh, pulled all the car cartilage out myself, just carved on it. Oh, wow. So I don't know if that's a good thing to do or not. It's that's usually good. not. Okay. <laughs> yes. I would say don't do that. I'd say turn it to this point. Okay. And then, you know, keep it dry or salted. Sure. And, and cold that way, you know, but when we get them back, you know, then I'm gonna turn these eyes back, all this, anything around the face is gonna go back to paper thin so you can almost see through it. Okay. And that way, when you're tucking it back into the form and into your clay and into your lips and nose, ears, everything, it's just high quality. So just, so just leave cartilage in then? Leave it in. Leave it in on uh -huh. here. Yeah, because do, then do it's still that in then? Will that go? No, we, I have I have ear liners. Okay. You know, and I'll fit it for a, an ear liner. You know, and some have notches. This one's blown out. This is usually what happens when somebody helps us turn ears because okay. they're blown out. And then you got to sew that back together. Uh -huh. Good times. Yep. Right? Yep. There's a a hole, but that won't be bad. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, and then we'll get the cartilage back out of the nose and turn all these lips. Okay. Everything like that. Let's just do a quick tour. Okay. Show us around the shop. So anyway, here's the shop. Here's my little airbrush station, all my paints, things like that. You know, obviously we get to use a lot of power tools and recreate and create things. Um, these are deer stands. I got two that are just notched in. Is this your bag? No, this is no. just one I put together yesterday. So this is brand new, you just did yep, it yesterday? just yesterday. I can still move the eyes and stuff, still move the ears around if I, where I want. It'll dry up a little more. There's still some glue I'm kind of working around, some some air pockets. Do you do this that from time to southern time? Utah or southern Arizona too. If you do that from time to time, you walk by it day after and you're like, yeah, I think that ear needs a tweak. Oh for really? sure. Yeah. We're nonstop. Like you have it's like a, a art drawing. If you just do it in one day, right. you're never gonna be happy with it. So I, I'll always come back to them. Once you set it, you've got this ready to go. Like, how many days do you have that's kind of pliable to work on before it's totally cured out? In here, I got heating and air conditioning. It's, you know, it's so it's pretty controlled. If I'm having a trouble with something, I'll bag it and then I've got as long as I need. Okay. But usually two to three days and you're done and then you're letting it finish dry. Because cool. I use a lot of clay in the eyes and ears and face and everything. Right. So that's an Arizona bus? Uh huh. It's a sweet bus. Yeah. What's the story on this guy? Um, that's a giant out of Nevada that came in, um, Adam. Is that this year's bike? No, it was oh. a, few, a couple of years ago. And, uh, it just hung out at the Epic Outdoor office forever. And they finally called me and says, Hey, come get, come get me once it's mounted. So yeah. Yeah. But this is a deer that was killed with this one. So I'm trying to get them both finished together. Um, send down to Arizona together. Nice. Cool desert bucks. Sweet. Yeah. Then I got a little, you know, obviously a restroom. Then I have a trophy room for, for finished product. Yeah, we're going to want to see that. This isn't, it isn't organized at all. I got stuff everywhere right now because I'm obviously running from one thing to another. You got some big coos here in here. 
Yeah, I'm like a little bit of a goose freak. Yeah, most of them are. That's a sweet vibe. Yeah, that one's actually one I bought. The yeah. rest are all mine and my boys. That's a big vibe. That's one of mine I just did. I need to get a funny place to hang it, but. They're tiny here, huh? Oh, man. Yeah. They're the cutest things in the world. <laughs> I don't think they're anything better than. It, it's tough to sell over meal there, but, but they're getting there, especially for the fact that you can hunt them. That thing's a slob. Yeah, 270 something. That's a, 270? Yeah. Just a wee bit. It's got like a two, almost a 220 frame. It doesn't, doesn't look like it in here, but the mass, the size, I think this side was one. Uh, don't quote me. Is that a Utah one? No, Arizona strip. Arizona small strip mm -hmm. Yeah, just waiting on that. I gotta get a hand on that. So we're just north of the strip, huh? Yeah. Right on, right on the border. Literally yeah. like three miles as a crow flies. You spend a bunch of time out there every year? I used to when it was over the counter archery sure. we were there all year and then I used to work with some outfitters and so now I I'm I just go if I'm needed and sure. we go out there and chase predators still and <laughs> adventure. What kind of year do you think it's gonna be out there? It should be good. I mean, we got a lot of rain last year. We had a lot of late feed that didn't help them, but it obviously helped them this fall. And then we had a pretty mild winter with enough moisture. Obviously, we could use a lot more. But I think if you talk to most of the outfitters out there, local ones like mm -hmm. cattle rancher okay. ones, they're saying yeah. we're looking pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if like last year being so dry, if it saved some deer, if guys just didn't pull the trigger because yeah. they didn't find what they were looking for. It and definitely did. Take a tag. It was insane how many we're supposed to be big deer we're not big deer at all yeah and i mean that's a big difference out there and them getting shot and not getting shot nowadays it's, it isn't you don't you used to go out there when i was a kid and there was two points hanging from the trees right and you just about die you know and yeah now, nowadays i mean most people know what they have and they yeah. get a good outfitter and, and do it right uh -huh. yeah yeah those only come along once in your life if you're lucky yeah this is the best part about a taxidermy shop, isn't it? Just all the all the animals. Yeah, just, I love it. Do you get a lot of guys that just pop in and want to hang out? Yep, probably all the time. <laughs> it's awesome. Because I always put my hands on all these bucks all day. I know. Yeah, yeah just sitting and the out there. Yeah, oh. yeah that Jeez. one was 60 something inches of mass. That's so silly. Yeah, it was gorgeous velvet too. I just got it all shined up and he says, nah, strip it, I want replicas and I like it hardware, so. That's a strip buck too? Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. Isn't that crazy? Look at those beams, kind of floaters. Look at this one. This one's disgusting. <laughs> That's a strip bug. No eye guards, Brady. I know. <laughs> my no, nemesis. No. Brady has never killed a bug with an eye guard. Well, there's one of my biggest deer that has zero eye guards. Yep. How wide is that bark? He's 36 on the dime. No, Straight not, four point. not wider, not less. It's oh. funny. When he was measuring it, the official guy forever holding it on the wall and then he's finally like I'm like what are you getting he goes 36 and I'm, like, I'm good with that if you want to write that down I'm like he's like I think I can get a 16th I'm like ah oh, who cares we're good at 36 yeah so, is this yeah. velvet that you've had re redone no this is a bought deer that somebody bought okay and they just looking to sell it okay um, it just who knows if it's real or not I think it is real I'll probably have it x-rayed it's too bad we can't get that fake velvet off, but yeah, yeah, it was pretty bad. Is there a Colorado deer? Is there a good way now to get velvet put back on? I mean, yeah, I mean, like this is this is that buck I just showed you. Yeah, because you never get like the this, marks, this the same, marks you can on see them. how much better this is than that. Yeah, for but sure. it's not still not it's still not perfection. Not no, and I don't I think that that's not possible. But if I this is my set, if I mount this i will distress it more mm -hmm. i'll airbrush some dark into it i'll take a file to some of these lines and really smash that hair down a little bit so airbrushing is the way you kind of airbrush helps you know but this guy did an amazing job i mean he pretty much got the white in there he does distress it a lot more than the other guys it's just yeah i don't think it's an exact science yeah i got fake velvet on one of my bucks and i just hate it oh it's horrible the antler snapped in half and I had to put fake on it just yep. kills me yeah yeah. Neville and I have a couple of caribou that we're, we're trying to figure out what to do because they were in velvet and they look great, but and then to strip it off. I don't mind the velvet on the caribou. Yeah, they, they'd probably be all right. Yeah, the fake velvet on those, they, they're a lot better than a mule deer. Yeah. Mule deer just, you know. 
Especially, but you can see the difference in this one and yeah. this one. Mm -hmm. it, it's, yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Especially, that, you get some shadows in it, uh -huh. some light, it looks good. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Well, cool. Thanks for having us over. I think we're gonna we're gonna do a little run through with Jeff. Do some caping tips and tricks. We're gonna cape out an animal and uh, probably uh, have you score something, right? Sure. Do you yeah. get that question a lot? Yeah. People yeah. come in, they bring a buck or a bull, and they want to know how much it scores. Yep, I get that a ton. Cool. So we're gonna do a little tutorial on how to score a mule deer and how to score uh, an elk if you can, if you got time. Sure. Cool. Yep. Yeah.